Hey everyone, Jay here. This is video number four in my lightsabers, custom lightsabers 101 video series. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on basically how to get a custom lightsaber. There's a lot of people who come in on social media or you know email, what have you, always asking questions around. Hey, you know where 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 can I buy a lightsaber? You know where can I get this? Is this any good? Is that any? You know I've heard bad things about these folks or good things about these folks. So I just want to talk around that a little bit. I'm going to give some of my opinions on some of the, um, the companies out there that provide both um, you know, full, full service uh, products as well as some of the companies that you, know, you can buy bits and pieces and parts from to um, cobble together your, uh, your custom lightsaber. So the, one of the first things I want to start with is setting some realistic expectations, and that's going to be around budget. The cold hard truth is you're probably not going to get a custom lightsaber for really anything under than about $300. And honestly, $350 bucks is about where things kind of start once you factor in blade and charger and, you know, and, and the full lightsaber itself. If your budget is lower than that, um, there, are, there are some alternatives to quote-unquote a custom lightsaber. Uh, there are the Hasbro uh, Black Series sabers. Uh, which you can usually find for under $300, most of them around $200. Uh, sometimes you can find them on sale for, for less than that. Uh, they aren't quite up to the same scale or um, quality that you might expect from some of the uh, custom lightsabers that, uh, that we built. But um, it, still, for, for a display piece or you know, if that's just your budget, they, they are actually, I mean, they're, they're going to make you happy. Um, so I, I start there. There are some other uh, boutique shops. Most of them are coming out of China where you can get some cheaper sabers. Um, you might not be quite as happy with some of those as you might be with, with uh, one of the Black Series sabers. So again, if, you're, if your budget is under, uh, frankly, under about $300, um, go look there. There's nothing wrong with those sabers. Plenty of people, I've, I, I've had collections of them. Um, uh, it's, it's a great place to start and uh, won't, you know, isn't going to put you out a whole bunch of money. That said, if you do have the budget, um, there are multiple different ways, or, or I should say uh, multiple different kinds of lightsabers that you can go about buying. So the next question to ask yourself is, why are you buying this? Why, why, why do you want it? Um, and I break these lightsabers into basically three categories. The first one are, is what I call practical lightsabers. And these are for if you're interested in doing some actual lightsaber combat, like maybe you've seen TSL or Ludo Sport, and you want to go and actually smack a lightsaber around, there's lightsabers that are better for doing that than other ones. Um, or maybe you've seen some videos of you know, some people practicing martial arts and incorporating lightsabers in them and doing lots of spins and things like that, and, you know, or flow artists that you might see. Um, so again, that, that would be a practical Kind, kind of lightsaber, and that's going to have a different price point, and you know, it's going to look a little bit different than, say, maybe if you were somebody who was looking to go doing some level of, say, cosplay, or what we like to call trooping, which is, um, again, cosplay mainly, um, or, you know, if you're trying to build sort of a character, you know, maybe you're, you want to join the 501st Legion, or, or um, I'm sorry, the 501st, or the Rebel Legion, um, you know, and you're, you're building a, a character around that, and you need a um, you, you need your lightsaber to go with that. Those are going to have some different, po probably some requirements than maybe the next category, which is really a collector's piece. Um, I don't want to necessarily say shelf queen, but more along those lines, um, something that's probably going to be a lot more expensive, a lot more high end, a lot more detailed, and really isn't meant to be walking around a convention center with, or definitely not you know, smacking into other, other folks' lightsabers with. So let's start with the practical side of things. If that's what you're looking at, there are, you can definitely get into those for, you know, that $350, $300-ish mark. Um, you can actually get cheaper than that if you don't want sound in there. Uh, you can get stunt lightsabers. You know, you can spend in the ballpark of about $150 for something that um, isn't what I call, what isn't a grab bag or a mystery box. Um, if you're okay with uh, totally just getting something random, both Ultra Sabers and Saber Forge offer mystery boxes. Uh, some of those, most of those are going to be stunts. Some of them might have sound in them. Um, we'll touch on the sound and the installation from both those companies here in a second. 
But, um, you know, if again, if you do want to get something that's under that $300 mark and you're not so concerned about having all the full features on it or having it really truly be something um, totally custom, you know, you can definitely go the uh, Stunt Saber route from either uh, Saber Forge or Ultra Sabers. Ultra Sabers is actually pretty popular with flow artists because some of their, uh, frankly, their lower end, their cheaper hilts are, are more ergonomic. They don't have a whole lot of sharp points on them and a whole lot of stuff sticking off of them, so they actually work very well for doing some of the, uh, the flow and spins that you see. Um, if you're really looking to get into some, you know, like some, some combat, you really want to go and you know, basically fight with your lightsaber, um, one company to really recommend is uh, Vader's Vault. Uh, Vader's Vault is a full service um, manufacturer. They, they, they make their own hilts, they install them, you, know, you, you can't buy empties, you can't do those kind of things, you just you go and you, you buy their hilt. They build there specifically around the idea of them being combat lightsabers. Uh, they don't, their sabers don't come typically unless it's a custom build with recharge ports, so they have removable batteries. It kind of simplifies things down a little bit. Um, they have a dedicated soundboard that they use, the Crystal Shard. It comes from Plector Labs. It's uh, very similar to the Prism. And they've got their own special Delrin chassis that's machined, and every, you know the the, um, the soundboard's screwed in, and everything's just um, very sturdy. Uh, so it's you know there's not a whole lot of chance you're probably going to break something smacking that around. Um, and their installs are are, are very good. Um, one of you know the, the real downside I would say is they're locked into more or less one board, which is the crystal shard, unless you get. Um, you know, a custom build from them, and um, that's a whole ton of money and a whole other waiting game that um, yeah, we, we can talk about later. Um, a next full service company that you might look at is actually Saber Forge. Um, a little caveat here, and I'm like, like I said, I'm gonna express some of my opinions. Um, generally speaking, their hilts, I, I, I like a lot of their hilts. Uh, for that reason, because they are pra they, they they do make some that are practical hilts. They're they hold up well. Um, they're very good for um, you know for again for for spinning, uh, flow art, or um, or just straight up combat. They also build their sabers as being combat ready too. That said, up until recently, they weren't using a chassis in their um, uh, in their installs. And while their wiring can tend to be okay to even pretty good. Um, they have an in-house soundboard that's a little bit lacking. They actually have a couple of them that's a little bit lacking. Um, and their sort of flagship board, the Saber Core 3.0 right now, um, to me it's not really a mature board. There's plenty of issues with it and people have problems. Um, it's not something I would recommend. Um, and I'm also not that keen on their LED choice either. That said, um, you know, if you are just looking for a basic combat Saber that you can beat around with, um, Definitely take a look at them, even in an installed one. Um, they are very easy to repair, so if you do happen to break one of those, um, they're, they're, they're very install and repair friendly hilts. I'll, I'll go over um, what, what those look like here in a second. Um, and then the next step down would be Ultra Sabers, and I just really can't recommend them um, outside of maybe empty hilts or some of the stunts or grab bags that you can get from them just because the price points are kind of really on target for what you get at that level. Um, but if you're looking for their installed sabers, frankly, they're overpriced for what they are, in my opinion. Um, most of their hilts, once you get out of their really cheaper level of hilts, are huge. Um, there's jokes all over social media about, uh, you know, you'll see a giant, like, sewer pipe, and someone will be like, hey, it's the uh, pommel for my, um, for my ultra sabers came in. Um, no joke, they are legitimately huge sabers. Um, so, you know, you look at the pictures of them, you're like, oh, hey, they've got this hilt over here. It's probably pretty big. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, moving on to the next kind of style of saber, which is, which is going to be around trooping. Um, again, I, I, Vader's Vault gets a recommendation there. They've got um, their sabers have their removal battery, which in and of itself really um, helps you out in that regard that if you need to have a saber that you can have you know lit up for hours on end because you can carry extra batteries with you and just swap them out as as um, as the batteries run out that's actually a great feature um, if you're looking for something a little bit more custom again 
Um, this is where you can start looking at other manufacturers to buy empty sabers, and you can get that saber custom built for you through an installer. And basically the way that works is you're going to go and find yourself an empty hilt that you really like, and then you're going to commission an installer to basically put whatever it is that you want in there and make it look how you want it to look, and they will do that and send it back to you. And of course there's there's going to be fees associated with that. Um, you know, there's going to be the cost of parts, but there's also going to be labor fees. Um, one thing to stress here is um, I'm, I'm an installer. I build sabers. Um, I love doing it. This is this is a passion for me. This is this is like the my, the, the best hobby I've ever done. Um, that said, I invest a lot of time in it, doing it for other people. So you know, time is worth money, and you know, I I, I expect to get some some payment in return, just like you expect to get a nice saber in return. So don't, um, if you're new to this, you know, and, and you're commissioning an installer and they're going to charge you a couple hundred dollars, three, four, five hundred dollars even, if you have some crazy, really totally fancy saber, um, they're investing a lot of time and effort into it. And if they're any good at what they do, it's worth it. Um, so anyway, to get back on track here, um, so some hilts, some places where you can buy um, some empty hilts. Again, if you're looking for something that's on the cheaper end, um, empty saber forge hilts. I do actually like them. Um, you know, you can. There's. I think out of the box, they can use some modifications or some beautification to them, weathering, maybe some extra enamel, powder coat, something like that, to kind of make them a little bit more unique. But for a base saber, um, most of them are pr are pretty nice. They have an apprentice line, which. Um, this is this is one of that are all basically one piece with the exception of the screw and pommel. These are fantastic for combat sabers because they are the, the one piece. They're also small and slim, um, but they started about seventy-five bucks, um, anywhere from seventy-five to hundred dollars for one of their apprentice line sabers. So again, if you are looking, you know, you're on that practical kind of lightsaber all the way up into maybe a trooping saber, um, good place to start. Um, which kind of brings us to a little bit of a segue here because we're going to start talking about the collector side and also more maybe around the character based um, what we typically call canon sabers even though maybe the character is not technically canon um, so lightsabers that are based around characters either in the movies, cartoons, comic books, novels, video games, etc. Um, and this is where things can really start to get expensive. Um, good quality accurate canon or character style sabers are not going to be cheap. Um, they, they, they just aren't. You can get some that are cheap. Saber Forge makes some. Ultra Sabers makes some. There's some other um, smaller boutique uh, companies out there, mainly out of China, that do as well. Um, the quality on them just isn't maybe what, you, what you'd want or what you'd expect. And some of them are going to really skimp on some of the accuracy um, that, that you might want. Um, and if, if you're okay with that, that's fine. But if you're really looking for that truly accurate saber, you're going to pay for it. Um, just, d d I'll give you a little bit of an example. So a, a popular collector saber is the, um, the Luke Skywalker Return of Jedi V2. And this is a hilt from RPK Customs. And so this is a hilt that's uh, $300. Um, that doesn't include the clamp or the card um, or any of the paint weathering that you put on. It just comes bare aluminum. That's $300, bare aluminum. You still have work to do to it. Um, all said and done, not counting labor for somebody to actually paint it up for you. You're going to spend close to 400 bucks. You factor in um, somebody who knows what they're doing on how to um, uh, weather up, um, either with a stencil or freehand, one of these guys. Um, and you can easily have an empty saber that um, or static display saver that's you know ballpark five six hundred dollars just to give you an example um, versus something like like I just showed you the saber forge saver this is not a character based saver seventy five dollars empty um, I don't have an example of one but um, you know uh, again there there's a lot of different character hilts out there um, that again they're going to they may or may not um, hold to the accuracy level that, that that you're expecting on. So if you if you're going trooping and you're looking for something that's going to be really truly accurate.
accurate to that character that you're trying to portray. So if you want, you're trying to be Darth Vader, or Luke Skywalker, or um, yeah, I don't know, wh whoever, um, and you want that person's lightsaber, you it's it's going to cost money if if you want a truly accurate version of that. Um, and as far as the trooping stuff goes, again, you can you can run the gamut from sort of the cheap all the way up to the high end, and where I think those boundaries lie before we get into the, the, the um, third part here, which is kind of the collector savers, um, for me, I kind of break them into three categories. So anything under about 150 bucks for me is what I call entry level or kind of the low end. It doesn't mean they're bad quality or anything like that. They're just, they're just cheaper. Um, typically, they're not going to be a canon or a character-based hilt. Um, and then you've got what I call kind of like the, the mid-level, mid-grade, which is going to be about that $150 to $250 mark in my mind. Um, and then high-end hilts for me are empties that cost anything really above about $250. Um, you know, and they, uh, there's empties out there that cost like over $1,000 um, just because there's, you know, like 20 of them in existence kind of a thing. Um, to talk around some of those high-end hilts now this is where we kind of get into the collecting side. Um, you know, if you've got the budget for it, um, places to go for hilts to look at are going to be some of the smaller, more, we'll call them boutique shops, or even getting on what we call runs. So some of the smaller boutique shops are going to be places like Roman Props, uh, KR Sabres, um, JQ. Um, God, they're, 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 frankly, they're, there's way too many to list, actually. But... Um, you know, to, to give you an idea, um, this is a uh, this is from Roman Props. This is an MK1. So this is Obi Wan Kenobi's. This is I love showing this guy off. You've seen my other videos. You've seen it. Um, so this is Obi Wan Kenobi's hilt from A New Hope, um, and this thing is just like the pinnacle of accuracy and just perfection in a um, in a lightsaber hilt. Frankly, uh, this is this is where you start getting to the in, in, into collector's pieces. Um, another beautiful one, um, 89 Sabres, Windu Hill. Uh, so 89 Sabres is out of, uh, China. Um, but unlike some of the Chinese Sabres there, they actually are producing really nice high-end Sabres. Um, there's also, um, uh, Ultimate Works, uh, which is out of China, which, um, here, you know, this is Count Dooku's from Ultimate Works, China, again, um, high-end collector's piece. What you don't want to do is to just blindly spend a bunch of money, okay? Um, there's a lot of installers out there. Some of them are better than others. Um, some of them are, shall we say, kind of on people's, I'll just I'll use some dirty words here, a shit list, right? Um, so there's been a rash of, you know, some, some folks kind of scamming other people. And we really want to try and minimize that. So that's kind of my reason around these videos here. So what I want to tell you is if you're really serious about getting a custom lightsaber made, um, shop around. Look at, you know, find an empty hilt that you, that you really like. If, you, if there's a character that um, you're really into, you know, maybe you're really into Luke Skywalker and you, you, just, you absolutely got to get his lightsaber from Empire Strikes Back. Well, that's going to be a Graflex, right? And there's a couple different places you can, you, you can get a replica. Um, or you can even get a vintage. And there's lots of different installers that can do that. Get on social media, get on the websites, get on the forums, ask questions. Don't just start throwing money and having to have that immediate return. And that's one other thing I want to talk about here is waiting. Patience is your biggest virtue in this hobby. Um, even the one-stop shops like Vader's Vault, can, it can be six months after you order Saber before you get it. Saber Forge has a long wait right now too. Um, really, the only ones that don't is if you order like off something off Etsy. I think you know Saber Forge has an Etsy store, or um, in some cases Ultra Sabers. They just ship out fast, and it's partially due to the the quality they have. If you're looking for a really truly custom Saber, um, you know once you start talking about ordering empty, shipping it off to an installer, getting the parts, going through talking with them, figuring out how that's going to be built, what it's going to look like. Um, six months could go by, a year. And if you're looking to get in on some of the more interesting hilts out there, you might have to get in on a run. 
and a run is where somebody is going to make a hilt um, but to do so they need to you know get uh, 100 people committed to doing that because you know a machine shop isn't just gonna make just some random hilts um, you know they have to tool for that so they're only gonna do it if it makes any kind of economical sense for them so you know there might be a minimum order that um, that person has to has to get so that's where the fun begins in that you know you're gonna get in on that run you're gonna wait till you get to the whatever mark of folks that is and then that person or that individual or group or company that's doing that run has to then get their design off to uh, to the machine shop and that machine shop probably gonna sit on it for a while because they got other stuff there they're machining too um, not just lightsabers they're doing all kinds of stuff and then eventually they get around to it maybe they, they make a prototype they send it back there's some problems has to get tweaked you know a year can go by before after you've committed to that run before you get your empty hilt in your hand and then from that time then you've got to go and actually get the thing installed um, so pace, patience is your virtue if you just want a fun little lightsaber that um, you know you can have installed and up and running really quick you know that's going to be a cheaper thing again you know you can go buy something like that from Saber Forge um, Ultra Sabers you know if you want something a little better quality um, and you don't want to have to deal with all the uh, the hoopla you know go to, go to Vader's Vault Genesis Custom Sabers um, they're, they're another it's a little bit smaller but you know um, Rob's out of Canada uh, but you're gonna you're gonna wait. Um, but is it worth it? Well, it's gonna be entirely up to you. But I can tell you this: that um, typically you get what you pay for. And when and, and an installer who's got a who's got a wait time, or a company that's got a wait time, is usually doing something right because there's a lot of people that are trying to get that product or get that service from them. Um, so hopefully this is, again, hopefully this video has been a little bit informational, a um, whole lot to cover. I'm trying to do these in 20 minutes or less here. This one's going over. But um, anyway, um, I may do a follow-up to this one and kind of go a little bit more in depth into some of the specific hilts. But uh, again, hopefully this was informative and um, happy sabering.